Hello and welcome to this week's Stories That Caught My Eye. In this week's episode we'll be looking at the Hubble Deep Field Space image and the missing light from that. We were looking at some basic problems with physics and quasars, uh, Ultima Thule, and finally ancient knowledge of the stars. I hope you enjoy this week's episode. First up is the missing light from the Hubble Ultra Deep Field image from 2014. Now this image takes uh, about 10,000 galaxies in one image, but is actually produced by stitching together many different images uh, across a, a vast period of time. And scientists have used a technique called abyss, which is effectively recovers some of the dim light from the outer edges of the largest galaxies. And they actually produced a, a paper on this, and what they actually discovered is that for a, a large number of the galaxies, they were able to recover a significant amount of light, implying that the galaxies were significantly larger than originally thought. Now, why this is particularly interesting, why it kind of caught my eye is because in the hunt for dark matter, we are searching for missing matter. If we look at the, the universe, we know that there is a certain amount of mass that we think should be there, but that we can't see. This image proves that actually our hunt for dark matter is erroneous, that actually what is there already exists. This image proves that there is matter that uh, we previously couldn't see that does exist, that is part of the galaxies, that could help explain why we don't need dark matter in the first place. The next article looks at the expansion rate of the universe. Now for some time they've been trying to pin down the exact number for the expansion rate of the universe, effectively the Hubble constant, and depending on the method you use, they've come up with different values for that number. Now this group of scientists decided to take a slightly different approach and to use quasars to try and fix that number. And what they discovered was that when they used these quasars, and they used a, you know, a big set of them, I think in the article it talks about 1600 or so quasars uh, across a, a, a range of ages. And the problem is that when they used this data, it became more and more curious. In fact, what they found is that it implied that the expansion rate of the universe was not fixed and that somehow this dark energy that we talk about, which is accelerating it, isn't a fixed constant, which is what they were expecting it to be. And if it's not a fixed constant, that means that there is some sort of problem with physics. Again, I find it quite curious that, that they hold on to this notion that quasars are exactly what they expect it to be. But remember back in the video that I produced looking at quasars, we already talked about the fact that quasars redshift is not all to do with recessional velocity. In fact, a large component is probably due to some intrinsic property, some mechanism going on within the quasar itself, which produces the change in the light that we see. So I am not surprised that they, when looking at quasars, find strange results. Isn't it about time that we started to look at redshift a little bit differently? Next up is the New Horizons mission to Ultima Thule, and we now have some high resolution images to look at. What I find particularly interesting about these images is there are some features which are difficult to explain. Uh, if we look at the image, we can see that it's made up of two separate meteors or objects, whatever you want to call them, rocks, which are, are, are joined together. Now, interestingly enough, on the smaller one, we can see there's quite a large indentation, but it doesn't really look like a meteor strike. So the question is, how was this formed? Around it, we can see smaller meteor strikes. There's a very interesting striation line uh, to the bottom of that indent. And then what's interesting is the, where they are actually, the two objects are joined together, there is a, a white sort of fusion line. And again, the question is, um, what what is that? How was that created? Again, on the larger one, there's another circular feature, which uh, potentially is an indent, but it's not that clear. Uh, again, it's a fairly uneven structure, again, with more white markings towards the bottom 
right hand corner of the object and some very bright white spots as well. Again hopefully as the more and more images come in we'll get clearer and clearer pictures but again this this forms questions about how did our solar system form and is the current model that we have for the formation of the solar system really the right one? Again potentially this is one of the things I would like to explore in future episodes. The final article that caught my eye was an article about some of the cave paintings and in particular focuses on the fact that um, they've done a new analysis of a whole variety of different cave paintings and in the past we've kind of looked at these and assumed they're depictions of uh, hunting events, you know, animals or, or uh, special ceremonies but in fact what they've actually discovered is that they were detailed markings of stars and in fact they mapped particular constellations similar but not necessarily the same as the constellations we have today. Now why this is particularly interesting to me is because our current history very much depicts and shall I call them cavemen, cavemen as being sort of brutes, not very clever, not very intellectual and my belief is firmly that that is not correct, that in fact um, civilization has come and gone many times and some of that information has been passed on and some of that information has been forgotten. And what we see in the cave paintings is, is some of the information which um, has either been passed on and then recorded in some way, but either way it is proof that there their ability to map the stars and to use them to precisely date things was much um, more sophisticated than I guess mainstream likes to depict them. And in particular the, the, the quote that I found most interesting in the article is at the end the, the professor who is doing the study uh, wrote down that intellectually they were hardly any different from us today. Whereas if you look at how we are taught at school very much cavemen are depicted as being uh, not very clever whereas the truth is actually they were just as intelligent as we are and potentially even more intelligent um, who knows and again this is one of the directions I would like to take this channel into is to explore the connection between what we see in terms of our current day understanding of science and can we map that to what we see in terms of ancient structures and what evidence there is to support the idea that uh, ancient cultures had access to this knowledge and used it. And that brings me to the end of this week's news episode. As always, follow the evidence, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.